Armando Hasurugan Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurugan. In this video, we're going to look at heme catabolism and uh, bilirubin me metabolism. So we begin with erythrocytes or red blood cells that are produced in the bone marrow through a process known as erythropoiesis. So stem cells in the bone marrow will give rise to early erythroblasts and then to eventually reticulocytes. And then reticulocytes will form erythrocytes, which are our red blood cells. Both reticulocytes and erythrocytes have no nucleus. These cells are anucleated. Anyways, these erythrocytes, their purpose is to circulate around our body and carry oxygen around. The oxygen in erythrocytes are bound to what's called hemoglobin. So these erythrocytes, they circulate around the body for about 120 days until they eventually get old. When these erythrocytes get old or they are damaged, cells known as macrophages, which are phagocytes, located uh, in the spleen and the bone marrow, will engulf these old erythrocytes and degrade them. When the macrophages in the spleen and bone marrow uh, degrade the erythrocytes, the erythrocytes will release its hemoglobin molecules. The hemoglobin molecules will then be broken down into two main components, the heme and the globin. Globin is essentially protein, and so globin, it will be broken down to amino acids, which then re-enters the blood and then reused for erythropoiesis again. The heme, on the other hand, is broken down to uh, two parts. The heme is broken down to unconjugated bilirubin, as well as iron. Now the iron will re-enter circulation bound, um, and essentially uh, reused for erythropoiesis again. The unconjugated bilirubin, however, is not recycled and needs to be removed by the body because it is toxic. The bilirubin, the unconjugated bilirubin that is produced, has a yellowish orange color. Um, the unconjugated bilirubin is actually lipid soluble. And so, when it's in the blood, it, requi it requires a protein to carry it around. The protein that carries the unconjugated bilirubin around is called albumin. So albumin will carry the unconjugated bilirubin to the liver for further metabolism. Now, interestingly enough, the liver has its own macrophages known as uh, Kupfer cells, which will break down also the old or damaged erythrocytes. So these um, erythrocytes will be broken down again to globin and heme. The globin will be reused for erythropoiesis and the heme will be broken down to iron and unconjugated bilirubin. The iron is reused for erythropoiesis, um, whereas the unconjugated bilirubin will be further um, metabolized in the liver. Okay, so we end up with the unconjugated bilirubin in the liver. What happens next? Well, remember the unconjugated bilirubin is lipid soluble. In the liver, uh, there will be a reaction that takes place called conjugation. What happens in conjugation is that um, the unconjugated bilirubin will form, will uh, be converted to a conjugated bilirubin with the addition of uh, glucuronic acids. The conjugated bilirubin is now water soluble. So it's important concept to know that the unconjugated bilirubin was lipid soluble, whereas the conjugated bilirubin is water soluble. Now, because this new conjugated bilirubin is water soluble, it can be excreted by the liver in bile. So bile 
which will contain the conjugated bilirubin together with bile salts and other stuff, will eventually be excreted uh, into the small intestine through the common bile duct. When the conjugated bilirubin is in the small intestine, it will travel towards the large intestine or colon. Now, towards the end of the small intestine, uh, a section known as the ileum, or in the beginning of the large intestine, the conjugated bilirubin will be converted by the intestinal bacteria to urobilinogen by removing the glucuronic acid through a hydro hydrolysis uh, reduction reaction. Urobilinogen is once again lipid soluble. Urobilinogen, about 10 to 15 percent, is reabsorbed by the blood and bound to albumin. The remaining 85 to 90 percent of uro urobilinogen is quickly oxidized by other intestinal bacteria to form sterocobulin, which has a brown colored uh, pigment. And the sterocobulin will then be excreted by the body, giving poo or feces its brown color. So that's what happens with most of the bilirubin. It goes out, at, uh, is excreted in feces, giving uh, it its brown color. But what happens with the 10 to 15% of urobilinogen that was reabsorbed into the blood? Well, this, this small percentage is carried by the albumin back to the liver through the portal system. About 5% of this urobilinogen will participate in the enterohepatic urobilinogen cycle, in which it is taken up by the liver and then re-secreted into bile again. The remaining 5%, the other 5% of urobilinogen, is transported by the blood to the kidneys, where it is converted to yellow urobilin and excreted, giving urine its characteristic yellow color. So that was about it. Just to clarify, the conjugated bilirubin is excreted together um, with bile. The bile is, can be stored in the gallbladder, well, is stored in the gallbladder, and is, and is secreted into the small intestine during digestion of lipids. Another important aspect to understand is that unconjugated bilirubin is lipid-soluble, and conjugated bilirubin is water soluble. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short video on heme catabolism and bilirubin metabolism. Thank you for watching.